a smoother ride, faster cargo access, greater reusability, and unmatched flexibility. These are the big promises behind Sierra Space's Dream Chaser and its sleek runway landings. On paper, it sounds like the future of space travel might just glide in like a jetliner. But hold on, there's a catch. Dream Chaser hasn't flown yet. Not once. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Crew Dragon might look old school with its parachute-assisted ocean splashdowns. But it's got something Dream Chaser doesn't. A rock-solid track record. In fact, Dragon's approach may seem less modern. But with the new upgrade, in many ways, it's actually safer, proven, and battle-tested. Let's break it all down in today's Tech Map episode. When we think about SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, we're looking at two spacecraft with totally different landing approaches. Crew Dragon, heavily inspired by the Apollo-era command module, is designed to splash down in the ocean using parachutes, NASA's preferred method under its commercial crew program. Why the ocean? Because water landings help cushion the impact, which reduces stress on the vehicle, the crew, and any sensitive cargo on board. This is especially critical when Dragon returns from the International Space Station, carrying delicate scientific samples. Splashdowns off the coast of Florida were standard practice to enable speedy retrieval and transport to NASA labs. That quick turnaround is essential to preserving the integrity of gravity-sensitive experiments. More recently, SpaceX shifted splashdown operations to the California coast to better manage where the spacecraft's trunk debris lands during re-entry. Reliability is key here. NASA has decades of experience with ocean splashdowns. It's a tried, tested, and trusted recovery method. On the other hand, Dream Chaser looks like a mini space shuttle. It lands horizontally on a runway like a commercial airplane. Its primary landing sites could include the Kennedy Space Center's shuttle landing facility. During descent, the space plane uses lift generated by its wings to glide through Earth's atmosphere and touch down smoothly on a runway. Dragon, by contrast, slows its descent with a heat shield and deploys four main parachutes around two kilometers above the ocean. It now also has an emergency thruster system powered by Super Draco engines that can kick in if the parachutes fail, firing just before splashdown to reduce impact force. Dream Chaser doesn't have such a system. It simply glides in and lands like a conventional aircraft, making the descent much gentler. Lower g-forces mean a more comfortable ride for astronauts and less stress on fragile cargo. Plus, because it lands on land, the cargo can be unloaded within hours. No need for ships or complicated ocean recovery logistics. That faster access is a major advantage for scientific missions and allows for quicker spacecraft turnaround. While SpaceX and NASA are working to extend Dragon's lifespan from 5 to 15 missions, fighting against the corrosive effects of salt water, Dream Chaser was built for reuse, up to 15 flights from the start. It's designed with only its cargo module being expendable. This gives Sierra Space a big advantage by avoiding the wear and tear of seawater and the costs of recovery operations. Sometimes, sticking to what's always worked isn't the best route. Innovation opens new doors. Dream Chaser's runway capability means it can land at airports around the world with minimal special infrastructure, offering massive operational flexibility. To sum it up, Dream Chaser's smooth runway landings provide a gentler ride, quicker cargo access, higher reusability, and greater flexibility. For missions that prioritize sensitive cargo or astronaut comfort, Dream Chaser may just be the better option. However, that doesn't mean Dragon isn't cool. Keep in mind, it has a backup emergency propulsive landing system, something Dream Chaser doesn't offer. This highlights SpaceX's unwavering commitment to safety. William Gerstenmaier of SpaceX explained, We've actually flown it on several other Dragon flights before this. This is the first time it flies on a NASA mission. He outlined that the way it works is, in the case, all the parachutes totally fail. 
This essentially fires the thrusters at the very end that essentially gives the crew a chance to land safely and essentially escape the vehicle. So it's not used in any, you know, partial conditions. Since the Dragon can land with one shoot out, we can land with other failures in the shoot system. The system activates when the capsule detects that there's a problem and it fires the, essentially the Draco thrusters at the very end and then provides a tolerable landing for the crew. So it's a, it's a true deep contingency, outlined Gersten Meyer. SpaceX has relied on parachute-assisted splashdowns since the original Dragon 1, and over time, this method has become the go-to for crew Dragon landings. Still, parachutes come with their own risks. Despite decades of aerospace use, parachutes can fail due to various reasons. External forces like wake turbulence, aerodynamic changes, and erratic descent speeds all happen in the chaotic environment of re-entry, and they can affect how parachutes deploy and stabilize. On top of that, parachutes can suffer from design flaws or assembly errors. While they might seem simple compared to the spacecraft's tech, they're often one of the most challenging components. As Elon Musk once said in a 2019 SpaceX press conference, parachutes, they look easy, but they are definitely not easy. We've had so many engineers quit over the parachutes. Another common issue is with the cutters, mechanisms that release the parachute lines at the right moment. If these fail, inflation can be compromised. A case in point, Blue Origin's NS-25 mission on May 19, 2024, where a chute failed to inflate because a control line didn't sever properly. Even material fatigue over time can affect parachute reliability. SpaceX learned this the hard way during an April 2019 drop test when a Dragon capsule crash-landed in the Nevada desert after three of its main parachutes failed to deploy. And it's not just SpaceX. Boeing's Starliner and Blue Origin's New Shepard have faced parachute issues too. This is exactly why SpaceX reimagined the use of its Super Draco engines not just for launch escape, but now as a last resort landing backup. Originally, SpaceX wanted Crew Dragon to land on solid ground using these powerful thrusters, but NASA had concerns. The idea required landing legs that would deploy through the heat shield, potentially compromising its integrity. Plus, the system needed a ton of additional testing before NASA would sign off. Instead, SpaceX found a clever middle ground, use the Super Dracos to cushion a water landing. This way, no extra hardware like landing legs is needed, and there's no hole in the heat shield. Win-win. And the perks of propulsive landing? Big ones, like more precise landings and reduced impact forces on the capsule and crew. That said, reusing the launch escape system as a landing safety net is a smart move. It underlines SpaceX's commitment to astronaut safety, and further secures its reputation as the world's most trusted spaceflight provider. It's also interesting to see NASA warming up to this backup idea, something the agency wouldn't have considered in the past, even if the risk was tiny. And SpaceX CEO Elon Musk chimed in on X with his usual flair. If you've got it, flaunt it. Polaris Dawn Mission Commander Jared Isaacman added, We were always confident in the shoots but this backup capability is pretty impressive. Of course, this new backup system only launched last year, but Dragon's reputation has been well known for a long time. While Sierra Space's Dream Chaser just stops at a potential vehicle, meaning it hasn't flown yet, SpaceX's spacecraft remains the only spacecraft so far routinely returning significant cargo volumes to Earth and has a proven track record of successful missions. Since its first cargo mission in 2012, Dragon has completed numerous successful commercial resupply services missions to the ISS. As of May 2025, Cargo Dragon has completed a total of 32 resupply missions, routinely delivering thousands of kilograms of supplies, experiments, and hardware to the ISS and safely returning significant volumes of cargo to Earth. Cargo Dragon missions have delivered critical hardware, such as the Nanorax Bishop Airlock Module and upgraded Solar Array's iRosa 
to the ISS, enabling station upgrades and expanded scientific capabilities. With the mission to deliver solar arrays, IROSA 5 and IROSA 6, in June 2023, the Dragon 2 fleet surpassed the Space Shuttle's total days in orbit with over 1,324 days, highlighting its sustained operational presence in space. The spacecraft can carry up to about 3,500 kilograms of cargo to orbit and return over 2,000 kilograms back to Earth, the highest downmass capability among current commercial vehicles. Among Dragon's fleet, Crew Dragon is truly the brightest name. To date, Crew Dragon has flown nearly 20 missions, transporting 62 astronauts to orbit and returning 64 safely to Earth. It supports NASA's commercial crew program and private missions, demonstrating reliability and safety for human spaceflight. Crew Dragon successfully restored U.S. capability to launch astronauts from American soil after the space shuttle's retirement, ending reliance on Russian Soyuz spacecraft. It has flown both NASA astronauts and private citizens on missions ranging from short-duration flights, Inspiration 4, 71 hours, to long-duration ISS expeditions, Crew 8, 235 days. Additionally, in some emergency situations, it plays an important role as a rescue vehicle. Most notable, rescuing two NASA stranded astronauts on the ISS in early 2025. They are Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, veteran NASA astronauts and retired Navy test pilots who have remained on the station since June 2024. The Boeing Star Liner spacecraft they were testing on its maiden crewed voyage suffered propulsion issues and was deemed unfit to carry them back to Earth. Their prolonged stay was significantly longer than the standard ISS rotation for astronauts of roughly six months. When mentioning SpaceX's vehicles, I can't help but mention its impressive reusability and turnaround. Crew Dragon capsules have been reflown multiple times, with the quickest turnaround between splashdown and relaunch being 137 days, showcasing rapid refurbishment and reuse. Dragon's successful cargo and crew missions have established SpaceX as a leader in commercial spaceflight, enabling NASA to outsource routine ISS logistics and crew transport, freeing resources for deep space exploration. This is thanks to the spacecraft's reusability, rapid turnaround, and operational flexibility. They have significantly reduced the cost of access to space, setting new industry standards. Despite Dragon soaring ahead, its companion in NASA's commercial crew program, the Boeing Starliner, continues to struggle. Boeing's long-delayed Starliner spacecraft can only be described as a disaster. After years of delays, safety concerns, and billions of dollars spent, Boeing is finally set to launch astronauts to the International Space Station in 2024. But instead of proving its mettle, the mission has turned into an embarrassment. The CST-100 spacecraft has been plagued by technical problems, including helium leaks and thruster failures, which have left the astronauts stranded in orbit for much longer than expected. Boeing eventually had to return the spacecraft without anyone on board, while SpaceX once again had to step in to safely bring the astronauts home. The incident is a major blow to Boeing's reputation and raises serious questions about how it can still be a part of NASA's manned spaceflight program.